G'day guys, Paul here from The Hook and the Cook. Welcome back to our channel today. I'm chasing crab, of all things. Uh, we've had a lot, of, a lot of rain on the coast here, and uh, what I'm gonna do is soak a few pots overnight, and see if I can do a crab cook up tomorrow morning, because I believe the weather's gonna brighten up. It's been a bit of a miserable day today. So uh, let's see how we go. Now, what I've got for bait, I've got four pots and four different types of bait. In one of the uh, pots, I'm using tin tuna, of all things. And then also I'm gonna use some kangaroo, some flathead, and also some mullet. And let's see which bait attracts the crab. So this looks like an all right place for a pot. We've got a few mangroves just here. So I'm just gonna sling this in here. That's our mullet. Another one can go in here. That's the flathead that I just put in there then. Okay, third trap is the uh, roux meat that we're putting in there. I've got a little bit of bread to throw in there to stop the roux meat from just disappearing altogether. So I'm just gonna put that in the bag. That'll also attract a little bit of life. Frozen roux meat that I give my dogs. Don't tell my wife I'll be in a lot of trouble that I've pinched that this morning. She loves them dogs more than me. <laughs> just gonna give this tuna a bit of a, a stab. Pop him up here. A few holes in there. That's all the oil leaking out. That's a olive oil. And um, with all that tuna smell in the water, hopefully we'll get a crab. And let's see how we go, eh? Well, I'm back out today and uh, ready to check the crab pots. It's looking at around about, I think it's about 12 o'clock and I'm starving about absolutely nothing to eat yet. Hoping that we've got a crab inside here, and it's a male crab. It's over 15 centimeters, and we're going to be laughing. Um, but uh, hey, look, I've had quite a few disappointing times on the crab here on Moosa River. A few times I've had them stolen, and sometimes they're all just uh, females. So uh, it's pretty uh, potluck, and I'll be very lucky if I do get a crab. Got a cod in the, uh, in the track here. There you go. I don't think he's a legal size cod. Oh, they are fantastic to eat. I'll get him out and let you have a look at him. Beautiful estuary cod caught in the trap. 38 centimeters they've got to be here on Queensland. This guy's 36, so he's got to go back. Let's get him back in the water, right? Eh? Beautiful looking fish. Absolutely cracker. There you go, mate. Straight back to where the hole he came from. Let's go and check, check the other crab pots. There was a little puffer fish in there that I've just gotten rid of. Um, but apart from that, nothing to eat. Let's cross our fingers. Nothing, nothing, no one. Oh no, there's a crab. There's one crab. Little Jenny in the trap, feeding on the flathead. She's a female, I'll bring her out and you can have a bit of a look at her. And then we'll get her in unharmed. But we tend to get lots and lots of females. We're not allowed to take females. They're completely prohibited. So we can't take any females home, unfortunately. No debate at the moment about it because we seem to be getting a lot of females and very rarely have too many males in the traps anymore. So uh, we're wondering whether the uh, little males are going to mate with some of these big dominant females. You know, you can see some of the females that come through. I definitely wouldn't mate with any of them. <laughs> Absolutely ripped me to bits. Okay, let's get this guy out and I'll give you a look at him. Actually, this crab is a male. I'll just pick him up for you. Yeah, so this crab is a male. As you can see underneath here, you can see the little point. You can see that just here is a male, an undersized male. Uh, I've got a little measuring stick here. And you go from the farthest point, and as you can see, he's well undersized. So he's going to have to go back in the water. Even though he, uh, I thought it was a female when I first seen it. They have a tendency to uh, snip people's fingers off these guys. So you got to be really, really careful when you handle them. Always grab them at the back, uh, where, then, where their flaps are, just at the back, or flippers. And um, grab them by them, they can't bite you there. I also put my foot on the, uh, on the shell when I'm going to pick them up as well, just hold them down. I was going to show you how to tie the crab, but I'm hoping to find a legal one and uh, we can tie one up there and we'll 
get this guy back in the water. I won't stress him out any more than he's already stressed out. And hopefully he'll be back, you know, next season and he'll be a nice big buck. But like you say, he's well under, well undersized. So let's get him back in the water. So there you go, guys, there's a Jenny, as you can see. With the round, just there. And that's where they keep all their berries or all their eggs. So we just measure her. And she'd be legal. Okay, but she's got to go back, unfortunately. Number, coming up on number three now. And this is the uh, kangaroo. That'll be interesting. I've never put kangaroo in a trap before. So let's see. Might be king bait for crabs, you know. There you go, maybe you should start using brew, uh, kangaroo to target brim. Stack of brim in there, look at that. So there we go, one. Twelve. Thirteen. Thirteen brim. So we got the lucky last, let's see if it's in there. Anything in there. I'm not feeling uh, too confident. Well, I've got some uh, a tin of tuna in there. I've uh, seen Malcolm Douglas, God rest his soul, uh, do this on a, uh, one of his clips years and years ago, so I thought I'd give it a crack. But I'd say there'd be a few more mud crabs where he was uh, popping his pots up and down. What we've got down here at the moment. So, uh, but yeah, you never know. He might be looking down on us kindly. Well, the tin of tuna didn't work. <laughs> so, back to the drawing board, I think. I'm determined to get a couple of crabs this morning, or at least one anyway. Um, haven't done too well in the last couple of days. So uh, we've had another load of rain, and uh, I'm gonna use a different bait this time. I'm actually gonna use chicken. I've had a little bit of a quiet word with a couple of locals, and they reckon the uh, chicken frames are the go. So let's see how we go. I'm gonna leave them overnight, and uh, hopefully cook you some up tomorrow, uh, tomorrow for lunch. So we'll see how we go, eh? Cross our fingers. Okay guys, I'm back out on the water today. Um, I'm actually using chicken carcasses. And uh, also I'm gonna throw a little bit of mullet in there as well. This is the last trap that I need to do. A little bit windy today. And the weather's been pretty ordinary. So that's why I don't mind getting out on the water when it's like this and trying to go for a few crabs. Because um, there's not too many people out putting pots out. Hopefully there's nobody out there tonight wanting to steal it either, you know? Chicken carcasses, they only cost about $4.50 for about six. So it's pretty good, pretty good value. Hopefully we can turn that into a $60 crab. Okay. That's the last one, so I've got to get this guy in the water. Place is full of mozzies at the moment too. There we go. Lively little character. Beautiful estuary cod. Absolute cracker of fish. Look at that in the light. Wow. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Back in the water. Oh, it's a male. Not a female. Beautiful. It's a bloody male. <laughs> How cool is that? Hopefully he's big enough. Oh, I'm over the moon. And he's an angry male. There you go. Beautiful. Have to measure him. Make sure he's the right size. Even better news. Even better news, he's just legal. So we're going to be eating tonight from point to point. He is perfect, spot on. How good is that? Woo! Over the moon. Awesome. Now let me get away from these mozzies. They're absolutely eating me alive. They're all coming in from the swamp here. So the last thing I want to do is do a cook up here. I'm going to get eaten alive. So I'll probably go back down the river. It's a little bit more picturesque. And I'm going to show you how to tie him up. Wow, the mozzies are thick here. Okay, once we've got the crab, you want to just basically secure him. 
he's a pretty aggro crab this one so I've got to be so careful I'm gonna get my foot on him hold him down with my foot I tie the crab up so underneath my foot underneath his two flippers Do. Just come through one of the claws here. Give yourself a bit of distance away from his claw. Get that quick. And I'm just going to come back under the claw underneath the flipper. I'll pull that in tight. Pull that underneath that toe. Let's do the same with this guy. earlier on. What I'm doing now is just turning it nice and tight. Get that pressure on that underneath that tail. And we're going to turn him up. This is the best way to tie him up. There you go. One more time. Some people put the foot on them but arthritis. <laughs> there you go. One tied up crab, all nice and safe. First of all, what I've got to do with these crabs is uh, basically to be humane, is make sure that we uh, put our crabs on an ice slurry. What I normally do is I leave the uh, bag of ice in there, put the crab in, and I put some a nice salt water into there. Never using any fresh water on the crab. Okay. And what that'll do, that'll put that guy to sleep. <laughs> Make sure that you uh, put the bung in your um, esky before you do that. Okay, and that'll put the uh, crab to sleep. Um, and it's the, uh, you know, it's the most humane way to um, to boil the crab. It's really, really important that you do that. And um, basically, a good half an hour to an hour in there, and um, it'll render it senseless, and it's going to be absolutely. Not feeling a thing when it goes into that boiling water um, it's just too cruel to just throw a, a live crab in there also they'll throw their nippers and also they'll stress which basically means that the uh, meat in the crab isn't going to be as good so yeah make sure you do that guys really important. now then just to set the cooker up normally i'll cook on the end of the boat but it's just with all this water traffic that's going around here at the moment the boat just keeps wobbling so i want to keep it on the center of the boat because we have got some boiling water going on there. Nice wet cloth or towel. We just want to get that guy going. And uh, what I've done, what I'm using is a thin base wok. Okay, for this crab today. I have got a larger pot underneath, but I think just for the one crab, this will do. Plus, it boils a lot quicker, and I'm going to use the water straight from the Noosa River. Um, always. I use the salty water in the river. Pop that on there. Pop a lid on it. I'm just gonna wait for that to boil. So I straight in with the old crab. Straight in. And then the lid goes straight on top. Okay. Now what I want to do, he weighs around about 800 grams, so once he comes back to the boil, because it's quite uh, it's quite cold when they come out of the ice, so it drops the temperature down. But once it comes back up to the boil, I'm going to put a timer on for eight minutes. Uh, so it's 100 grams per minute for the crabs once they've come back up to the boil. So make sure if you've got some scales, you can weigh him. I, I think he's approximately about 800 grams. He's not a kilo, I don't think. So uh, perfect uh, meal for one for me today. And uh, I'm going to do this very, very simply, guys. I'm not going to go to any fancy cooking today. I'm out on the boat. I'm on my own. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to rip into that crab. I am so hungry. It's not funny. And uh, I've worked hard for it, so I think I deserve it. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the crab. It's come to the boil now, as you can see. Beautiful. So the time is going to go on. Eight minutes. Here we go. 45 seconds to go. <laughs> Wow, can't wait. I am so hungry. This is not funny. And I've managed not to spill too much water on the boat. Let a couple of big boats go past. 
probably better if you did this on the beach but it's that windy everywhere else on the river I couldn't um, probably get the good audio that I'm getting here at the moment so I'll do it all for you guys <laughs> here we go how good she looking wow absolutely awesome there she is she's done let's get her out of the pot turn this guy off first let's pull the this Straight over the side. <laughs> okay, straight into a nice slurry now. Here we go. Let's get it straight in there. So I want to put it to the back device. Put the back device. And the crab goes straight in. It'll cool down nicely. And not just that. But also, I'm just going to throw a beer in there as well. <laughs> Crab and beer, you can't beat it. You, Looking forward to it. There you go, folks. Nice, muddy. Beautiful. I'm going to smash this up now and uh, get into it. So I'm going to give it a quick taste. I'm going to rip one of these claws off. And uh, I'm not messing about. I'm really want to give a bit of a taste of this. Look at that. Oh my god. Tell you what, one happy cook. No idea. We'll see you next week guys. Uh, every Friday here at the Hog and the Cook. Don't forget to check uh, Scotty Lyons is out. Um, he's got a fantastic clip coming up next week. Hope you enjoyed that and don't forget to comment and subscribe. Please comment, ask as many questions as you want because we do get back to you. Okay? Cheers guys. Take care. I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven.